Let us pray. We are thankful, we are grateful, Father, for the songs of Zion that you give us. We're thankful, dear Master, that you have so allowed us this opportunity to come and worship. And we ask, Father, now that you would hide me behind your dear cross, that these, your people, will hear what you desire for all of us to hear, in spite of what I may do or say. In your Bibles, in your Bibles, uh, Psalm 23, perhaps you don't even have to turn to them, in your Bibles, you know this particular scripture by heart. It is one of the most beloved scripture. It is the scripture that we, Sister Glenda read for us this morning. Uh, it is the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. And we just want to do the first portion of the 23rd Psalm. Okay? Of that first verse even. Uh, which says, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Can you say that with me? The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Amen. Um, I usually keep a dime with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and here's why. Uh, when I was a, a small child, maybe about eight or nine, my grandmother, uh, Sister Ever Lee Ford, uh, passed on to glory here about 40 years ago. Uh, my, 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 my grandmother gave me a dime. And she said, Bo, always keep a dime with you. Hmm? And at that time, I didn't know the meaning of it, but since I have uh, grown a bit, uh, aged a bit, uh, I, I now hold this dime, or dimes that I may have in my pocket, uh, very dear to me. Because this dime represents a connection hmm, to her and to the principles that she stood for and what she taught me. My, my grandmother did not have uh, not even a third grade education. But I will tell you this, her theology, her wisdom, far, goes far beyond any great theologian that ever lived. And this dime that she gave me represents a connection to how she loved us, all of us, and how she, not knowing all of the scripture, but scriptures that she could explain to us in her own way. And one of them was the 23rd Psalm as such. And, and, and just that first section of that verse, the Lord is my shepherd. David is connecting hmm, his sheep that he cared for to something tangible about his relation that referred to his relationship to God. And I believe we all need something tangible that will remind our hearts and minds, would stir us in such a way that we will remember the relationship that we have with God. It, it, it could be a cup, it could be a Bible, it could be a family heirloom that's passed, it could be a recipe, it, it, it could be a routine where someone would call you on uh, a regular basis, that you hold that particular event, a person in your memory that gives you connection, a real-time connection to a God and how God and you have a relationship. Uh, David, David, David said that the Lord is, and, and if you just stop right there uh, and say the Lord, uh, that, that, that indicates to me that David had at least 
a human understanding that God existed. And not only this, God exists that he was Lord unto David. Uh, it, it's one thing to have a cerebral uh, image or knowledge of a God existing. It's quite different to know that that God, our God, the maker of the universe, is your Lord. Uh, there's always been some knowledge shared by all, just by looking at nature, uh, that there is a force greater than we, that there is a creator, and, and, and that in creation we have an expression of who God is and how God relates to God's creation. And whether or not we take it personally is up to us. Whether we respond to the creation with a response that we want to be in community and communion with the Creator is left up to us. As we submit to God being Lord over our lives, that we have a relationship with God. And David, as, as, as part of what he had to do uh, in this life, connected his chore of taking care of the sheep. And he connected that occupation, if you will, uh, which was usually given to the youngest of the family, and David was the youngest of Jesse's sons, and, and they usually relegated that chore to keeping the flock. And, and, and David uh, connected his vocation, his chore, uh, with that being of a relationship with the God of the universe, the Creator, and now his law, because he had something tangible in which to refer how he felt about God and the relationship he had. David said, the Lord is my, my shepherd, a shepherd keeping sheep, and he connected being sheep and the shepherd as having a special relationship, a relationship where the shepherd was responsible for keeping the sheep. And you cannot miss this, that God is responsible for keeping sheep, his sheep. And if you let that Soak into your mind that the Creator, God, who's all-powerful, all-knowing, knowing everything about us, is responsible for keeping us. Mm. Mm. I, I know we are going through this pandemic, and, and, and we have, through the wisdom that God has granted us, the local and health uh, local authorities, the state authorities, the federal government, as well as the, the health authorities on trying to, quote-unquote, keep us uh, from being harmed through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that's good because I believe all of those agencies are part of what God provides for us to help the populace be more safe. Mm -hmm. But, but, but never forget that God is responsible for keeping you and for keeping me. That, that, that the great God, the great I am, hmm, is responsible for me. Yes, I am responsible in terms of my relationship with him. Yes, there is a requirement for everyone who is of God. 
And, and, and that requirement comes to us uh, in Micah 6 8, where God impresses upon the prophet to tell the people then and the people now that we have a responsibility, O oh mortal, and that is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And if we're going to do justice, hmm, as part of that first mandate for our responsibility with the Creator, if we're going to do justice, then we'll need to obey the laws that are put in place that will protect us Mm -hmm. as well as others. That, that if we're going to do justice, we're going to think about others more than ourselves, whereas in this pandemic, that we may be okay, but exposing ourselves out there, outside of the guidelines of the law, is not being just to our fellow persons. That, 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 that to do justice hmm, is to be considerate on the equitable distribution of God's love and the resources that we have. That, 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 that we concern ourselves with people who cannot care for themselves as being an injustice when we overstep them. That we do not care for those whom we ought to care for, for those who are unable to do what we can do. It is justice, it is righteousness for us to do so. We are to love mercy, we are to love one another, even in spite of that person, even in spite of ourselves, that we ought to love and show compassion to people whom we don't even like, who may not like us. But we are to love those people, love the community, love the institutions that bring about a justice for all of us. We may not like it, but we are called to love. We are called to do mercy. We are called also to walk humbly with our God. That whatever we do, we do it with a humble heart and humble mind and that we view others as more or not less than who we are. That we seek to serve a community. We seek to serve others. That we cannot love God whom we have not seen and then mistreat, misappropriate resources to misuse our brothers and sisters whom we see every day. So there's a requirement, and David had this requirement of keeping sheep. And he likened God hmm, to a responsibility of keeping those who are gods. Hmm, that God keeps his creation. That God keeps you and me through whatever situations may present themselves that God is responsible for insulating us from dangers seen and unseen, from pandemics that come into our lives, whether they be emotionally, whether they be physically, that God is responsible for keeping hmm, us safe. Hmm? And, and, and David had that tangible connection of a shepherd and his relationship to the sheep. As being the Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd that will keep us through danger seen and unseen. A shepherd that will defend us. A shepherd that will have us go through the fire, not alone. Have us go through the high waters, not alone. To have us go through all circumstances, not alone, because that shepherd has promised to never leave us or forsake us. That shepherd has said to us that he would be with us always. That shepherd 
will keep us right where we need to be. And then David says, the Lord is my shepherd. And I like that. I like that, 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 that a, a, a Christian can, can say, God, the God of the universe is my God. The God, the God that died for all of us is my Lord. It, 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 it denotes for us who claim that, that we have had a relationship initiated by a faith in Jesus who saves us. It, it emphasizes the fact that we have had an experience of coming in right relationship with the Creator by way of Jesus Christ. That we have surrendered ourselves to a God, to a Lord, to a connection that we can depend upon that will be with us no matter what. And that we can claim him for ourselves. That the Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd. Yes, he was grandmother's shepherd. Yes, he was papa's shepherd. But now I can say that the Lord is my shepherd. Hmm. Because sometimes we have to walk this path without Papa, without Mama, without, sometimes we walk this path, but we got to know within our hearts that God is my shepherd, that he watches over me, that he looks upon me as treasure, that he died for me, that I am, hmm, worth something. Hmm, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made and that he thought of enough of me to die for me. Hmm, and, and, and lastly, and lastly, there's just something about having a tangible reference to your relationship with God. I mentioned about the dime that I usually keep. Uh, Several years ago, I was at a pastor's retreat, and uh, we were sitting with a retired pastor and his wife, and they were having a hard time uh, with dealing with the death of their son. Their son was tragically killed in a car wreck, and in talking with them, uh, even after several years, they were still still struggling with that, still having uh, some stress over losing uh, their son in such a way. And, and, and we were sharing with one another, and I, I held out this dime, uh, that I, well, the dime that I had in my pocket at the time, and uh, their eyes lit up when I shared the story about my grandmother giving me this, a dime, because they said that their son, for some strange reason, collected dimes. Up until the day that he passed, he collected dimes. And at that time, uh, I, I gave that pastor and his wife my dime. And I could feel within myself the release hmm, that that retired pastor and wife had by having someone give them a dime. We all need each other to pass something on to each other. Whether it is a phone call, whether it is a handkerchief, whether it is some article, whether it is a hug, and, and I know at this social distancing that we have, I'm, I'm, I'm hugging you uh, remotely, uh, 
but, 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 but we need something tangible to hold on to. I believe God gives us people and, and, and things that we can pass on to each other, that we can do for each other, that as God's shepherding all of us, that we become his under-shepherds to promote what God wants promoted in his world. That, 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 that the creation of which is groaning for the return of our Lord, that we in the meantime would spread his love, would share his love, would give his love, would give the care to those whom we ought to give. Because in the end, when you read in Matthew 25, there will be a separation of sheep and of goat. And the sheep hmm, will be those who fed him hmm, when he was hungry. The sheep would be those who clothed the naked. The sheep will be those who took folk into their homes. The sheep would have visited those who are in jail and cared for the sheep. One would ask, when did we see you hungry? When would, did we see you naked? When did we invite you in? When did we see you in jail or in prison? When did we see you sick? Jesus said, mm, as much as you did it unto these little ones, mm, these sheep that I have, mm, you have did it unto me. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm, the Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd? Then let us rejoice at his relationship with us being the sheep of his pasture. Let us now rejoice in it. Amen and amen. Mm.